fault in the country's criminal justice system, prompting efforts by the federal government to address the challenge. One of such efforts is the construction of a 3,000 capacity maximum, maximum custodial centers in all six geopolitical zones of the country. This one in Abuja, North Central Nigeria, is at 70% completion. And Acting Controller General of Corrections, John Mrabere, promises to keep up the pace of his predecessor and deliver the project within the year. What I'm seeing here, I'm very sure that by the end of this year, this place will have been completed. Inadequate space for training of inmates, you know, that for reformation has enshrined in the new act to become a thing of the past. At the same time, while they are training, they have this religious morals will be impacted into them so that they become useful citizens on discharge from this center. The project, which began in 2019, is expected to host a court, three security custodies, a hospital, residential quarters and recreational facilities, among others, aimed at reformation of inmates. In Abuja, Victor Azu, NTA News. The Katuna Area Command of the Nigerian Customs Service has intercepted smuggled items with duty paid value of over 30 million naira within two weeks of intensive operations. Controller of Customs in charge of the Katuna Command, Adewale Musa Aremu, said among the intercepted items was a petroleum tanker loaded with 210 bags of foreign rice of 50 kilograms each. Shell Wadamin completes the story. Displaying the smuggled items to newsmen, the controller of the area commander of the Nigerian Customs Service, Kazana Adewale Musa Arimo, explained that the tanker meant for the haulage of petroleum products was intercepted at Duzama with a contraband concealed as premium motor spirit PMS. Controller Adewale Musa Arimo said upon thorough investigation, Operatives of the command discovered that only one out of the four compartments of the tanker contained premium motor spirit, while others were reconstructed for smuggling purposes. Custom will never and will not rest on their oars. We will continue to punch up all their antics day in, day out. Other items intercepted include one BMW X5 2014 model car with duty paid value of over 3 million naira. One Hilux Toyota 2020 model car with duty paid value of about 7 million naira. And one Toyota Land Cruiser with duty paid value of over 17 million naira. Controller Adewale Musa Adimu said in the process only one person was arrested as the smuggled vehicles were abandoned. He therefore warned smugglers that the command will not rest in the fight against economic saboteurs. In Kazana, Shehu Adamu, NTA News. Lagos is our first port of call and Hingino will be guiding us. Hello, Hingino. Hello, Lydia. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency has seized 40 parcels of cocaine worth 32 billion naira with two suspects arrested at the Tinkan Island port in Lagos. The substance, weighing over 43.1 kilograms, was impounded by operatives of the agency following a tip-off. Abola de Salami reports. Just like every other vessels berthing at the Tinkan port to dislodge cargoes after thorough search by all relevant security agencies, MV Spa Scorpion, the consignment housing the illicit drugs, arrived from Brazil and placed under two days surveillance by officers of the NDLA Tinkan Command following intelligence over the contents on the vessel. After the search, NDLA discovered 40 compressed parcels of cocaine and arrested two clearing agents while the vessel was impounded for further investigation. This is something that we've been monitoring for quite some time and uh, eventually we got hold of this exhibit. And the total street value of what we have here is about 32 billion naira. So you can imagine with this uh, humongous seizure that we have here, 43.110 kg, assuming we were not able to take it off from the suspects and it got its way into the market, it will have been calamitous. But With the renewed commitment of officers and men of the agency to rid the country of all forms of illicit substances, Commander Etnan said NDLA is on a red alert and remains vigilant in achieving the set goals. The body language of the new chairman of the agency added his zero tolerance to drug abuse 
or trafficking, coupled with dedication to work and discipline. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. Talking environment now. With the rainy season around the corner, there is usually a growing apprehension among communities situated along the river bank in Lagos State. But residents of Bariga can now breathe a sigh of relief due to the intervention of the federal government in solving their periodic flooding challenge. Michael Olale reports. Bariga, a metropolitan settlement by the sea but densely populated, suffers from the adverse effects of environmental degradation. And to residents, rainfall has become a major enemy. With the season fast approaching, charity Sholanke has started having sleepless nights based on past experiences she has had more than 30 years. It has destroyed a lot of things that we cannot... Even up to now, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to get over it. It's not been easy. It has affected my business. Apprehension seems to be over in the axis, as the federal government is inspiring a wind of change through an erosion control project covering four kilometers to mitigate extensive flooding. The project is about nine months, but of course, we all know that in a few months' time, the rains will be here. So at the inception of the rain, we intend to have all drainage systems in place. Then before the rain intensifies, the roadwork should have been completed too. The ambience across the seven communities under Bariga local government is that of excitement that, regardless of the intensity of the rains this season, their homes will be saved from the flood. This is a very, very appreciated intervention from the federal government to this community. We have not had government uh, intervention in this area in the past 30 to 40 years. The swiftness by which they, they started the project you know, gives us a, a lot of hope, and we believe that um, this project will continue. The project is structured to ensure that all the communities under the local council development areas are well impacted by the intervention. In Lagos, Michael Lane, NT News. Let's now turn our attention to the economy. Efforts by, of the federal government to leverage the non-oil sector in driving economy, economic recovery in the aftermath of COVID-19 pandemic is yielding positive results. Abola de Salami reports that various federal government revenue earning agencies are implementing reforms and policies to achieve this objective. The face of the current realities as regards COVID-19 pandemic and volatility in oil price at the international markets. Most economies of the world had a readjustment to their financial spending in order not to operate on more deficits in their budgets. Nigeria, as an economy that mostly relies on oil as its major source of revenue generation for the implementation of capital and recurrent expenditure, had its 2021 budget reviewed to accommodate economic realities. In this regard, the federal government towards ensuring a paradigm shift from a low revenue performing budget to a more responsive financial estimate, resting its shoulders on internally generated revenue, reviewed some tax policies and charged relevant agencies to be more proactive in the execution for more earnings. And so we were poised for two year implementation. The budget on January, which was something that we hadn't done uh, for a long while. And, and, and you know, um, this proves that the delayed passage of the budget was a contributory factor to the um, inadequate implementation of previous years. With an improved system of tax payments introduced by FIRS, including automation process, e-filing, and decentralization of auditing system, as well as the electronic payment system adopted by most of the agencies, Experts agreed that more taxpayers will be brought into the tax nets, thereby growing the nation's revenue base. Um, the audit processes too were decentralized, so that we have a very small, small unit of taxpayers being attended to by the audit team. Those, two, those things will improve collection. While all efforts are being intensified to widen Nigeria's tax net, to boost the federal government's source of revenue generation, an appeal for a sustained transparent implementation process was also advocated. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. We now take a break. Nationwide continues shortly.
you wonderful news. The village headmaster is coming back to your screen. Mowiri Abimi Owiri. Born a better school for last Gidi. Not be all this on a rugged, yeah, yes, school for each other. I know, I know, I don't know for you. Sega, it's called Oja Village. Kadefi, we know how to get a lot of money. And I know that even you too, you are getting a lot of other schools. Hey, we are trying to shower. Sweep her leg out. She was standing there. Sweep it. I love you so much. And how did I give you the impression that I was interested in that position? <laughs> Year anniversary. You mean anniversary? I mean, I talk with that now. Not for me, not for me, not for me because of for me. Eventful. We curiously expect things to happen, even when we don't know what. Our human nature makes us like and repost lots of information. Some are unverified, inciting anger and hate. Sometimes innocently, other times the urge to break it first. This, in most cases, has caused destruction in many nations. Burnley is taking maximum points in their last two matches against Crystal Palace. Will they make it a hat-trick of victories when both teams square off at Soho's Park this Saturday? Find out in Crystal Palace versus Burnley on the Premier League Live, showing on the NTE Network from 3.30 p.m. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Axis Bank, Papai Jebu, Lipton, and Close Up, in association with Goal.com. Thanks for staying with us. Now the NCDC update. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control has confirmed 1,056 new cases of COVID-19 in 21 states and the FCT. In the new figures, Lagos State is leading in the new infections with 214 cases, followed by Oshun with 120. Then the FCT with 116, Plateau has 88. Ebony 75, Quara 73, Gombe 70, Ondo 57, and Rivers has 47 new confirmed cases. 
Other states are Kwaibom 38, Edo 25, Oyo 23, Kano 22, Delta 19, Katsina 18, Borno 16, Nasarawa 13, Ekiti and Ogun have eight cases each. Bauchi has four, while Benue and Jigawa have one each. With this, Nigeria has 141,447 confirmed cases of COVID-19, out of which 115,755 were treated and discharged, while 1,694 died of the virus, unfortunately. Drivers and commuters who failed to comply with the compulsory use of face masks in Oweri have been arrested and tried by the Imo State COVID-19 Task Force. Bright Ebocho, who joined the enforcement team, has details. Imo State COVID-19 Task Force, in its resolve to ensure compulsory use of face masks, took its enforcement drive to Wedwan Road by Cherubim bus stop, where transporters and private drivers were arrested. Some of the defaulters who appeared before the mobile court set up by the committee promised to comply with the safety protocols henceforth. We pay correction. I will put up, we put them on my face mask. You'll be having your face mask anytime you are going anywhere. Today. Sure, I will, I will always be with my face mask. Chairman Imo State Tax Force on COVID-19, Professor Maurice Iru, says the government is not relenting effort towards ensuring an end to the spread of COVID-19. He points out that the enforcement will be taken to the various local government areas of the state. We're using persuasion as our main method of uh, trying to pass on the risk communication. But where the persuasion fell, we are ready to enforce the rule or the law of the land, namely wear face masks whenever you are in public, maintain social distance in all functions, and try to have a, a, a system for personal hygiene, washing the hands with soap and water, and or with uh, hand sanitizers. In our bright, able to NTA news. To enhance the fight against COVID-19 at the University of Calabar, the Cross River State, Ministry of Health is donating personal protective equipment and other items to the institution as it settles in for academic activities. The donation was made when the Vice Chancellor of the University, Florence Obi, visited the State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Beta Edu. Justina Etten reports. As the University of Calabar resumes for a new academic session, the university authority is worried that it may not be able to single-handedly curb the spread of the pandemic in the school. And this is the reason for this visit of the vice chancellor to the Cross River State Commissioner for Health. We are importantly carrying out a very robust sensitization uh, and awareness exercise among our students and staff on the use of uh, face masks, hand washing and use of sanitizers. We're happy that University of Calabar has been very, very proactive. They were able to set up this committee and the state government is working hand in hand with them to see that we do not have um, any outbreak of COVID-19 in the university and we do not have the school shut down as a result of um, people having so many cases of COVID-19 within that um, environment. Personal protective equipment and other items we are donated to the university while the commissioner in company of the vice chancellor and her entourage inspected facilities on ground to curtail spread of pandemic in the citadel of learning. In Calabar, Justina Etam, NTA News. Next is Makudi and Susan is standing by with more reports on Nationwide. Good to see you, Susan. Good to see you, Lydia, and welcome to Makudi. The All Progressives Congress, APC, Beno State Chapter, has flagged off the state membership registration and revalidation exercise in line with the directives of the National Secretariat of the party. Elias ETR reports that the flag off attracted several APC stalwarts across the state. We sit down and look at the problem that is erupting in some of our local governments with a view of thrashing them and the project ahead. The panel chairman, APC Registration and Revalidation Exercise, Bernard State, 
Mr. Mohammed Ali Mashi, flagging off the exercise in Takalo government area of the state. Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, Senator George Akume, who renewed his membership of the APC, says the party has contributed immensely to Nigeria's security, youth empowerment and school feeding programs, among other several initiatives, and needs continuity to achieve more heights for the benefit of the Nigerian populace. Nigerians are very excited about the exercise, principally because the APC is the party that has made a difference in the lives of our people. Look at the landmark achievements of Mr. President. The state chairman, All Progressives Congress, Abayaro, and other APC stalwarts call on communities to ensure adequate protection of the processes and its personnel to achieve the desired results. And you can see the teaming number, you only one pulling boots. And if this is replicated in all pulling boots in Nigeria, then you will know that this is a party to beat. The flag off of the registration and revalidation exercise in Benin State so far is being conducted under a peaceful atmosphere. And members are being encouraged to come out in mass and register or revalidate their registration. In Makudi, Elias, ATF, NTNews. Some residents of Makudi, the Bureau State capital, are still grappling with the hike in the price of cooking gas in recent times. They have called on relevant agencies to wade into this unexpected development to reduce the hardship it has caused users. Igarin Solomon went around the city to assess the situation and brought back the support. Cooking gas is a product that has been in use in most homes in Nigeria over time, following campaigns by various administrations to end deforestation and the use of firewood. This achievement is now being threatened as the price of cooking gas has continued to rise, which would lead households to firewood as an alternative source of energy. A visit to some gas refilling spots in Makudi Metropolis indicates that a 12.5 kilogram cylinder is now refilled for 4,800 naira against 4,000 naira in the past. Some buyers said the hike in price has increased their hardship. Everything in the market now is increasing. Food stores, they are increasing. So increasing the price of gas is another thing altogether. We, we cannot afford it. How can we be buying gas? How many kg will you buy that will take you for a month? It's not easy. Please, we are begging the federal government, let them do something about it. Bonifos Anigo, an owner of a gas refilling spot in Makudi, he attributed the increase in price to how costly it is supplied to him. I feel that like into the business now, it's affecting us seriously because the sales have dropped. Most people come to buy now, you know, you don't kind of think that this have increased, not even uh, five naira or two naira, to one thousand or five hundred. This uh, increase is much. Efforts to speak to officials of the Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR, in Makudi was not successful as they declined comment. In Makudi, Iverin Solomon, NTA News. And that does it from Makudi. It's back to Lydia in Abuja for more on NTA Nationwide. Many thanks, Susan. The National Orientation Agency, NOA, has applauded its online youth-oriented programs on For Better Nigeria platform, created towards evaluation of indi individual perception of the nation as a veritable tool for agenda setting towards youth's engagement in governance. Kenneth Nanim reports that the agency used the opportunity to reward some youths who were outstanding in the online contest across the country. Following increased calls for youth inclusion and participation in governance, the National Orientation Agency in 2020 developed an online initiative which gives the youths the opportunity to express their views in a minute video on their perception about the nation. Hosted on the platform codenamed Hashtag for Better Nigeria, the platform allows participants to share their views and profile solutions to some of the national challenges. It's to expand the frontiers of the conversation around our sense of patriotism, love for nation, in the midst of the heightening of the voices of the naysayers. 
for proper coordination of this online program, an 11-man team of directors was constituted from various strata to evaluate over 200 entries, out of which 14 were selected. Queen Teresa from Okun State came first, Victory Asaka and Ferris Obiora, both from Lagos State, took second and third positions. Young people are always online expressing themselves and what we just thought to do was to move their mindset from engaging negatively to engaging positively and using innovative tools like social media responsibly. The National Orientation Agency says the program is a stepping stone on rolling out other youth for course initiatives for national discourse on development. Kenneth Nanim, NCA News. Our next report from Uyo says Aquaibom State Government is developing a roadmap for a robust partnership with indigenous innovators in line with Federal Government Renewable Energy Program. Already, the State Ministry of Science and Technology is meeting with local inventors to draw plans on achieving technological advancement for global competitiveness. We'll bring you details of that report in our subsequent bulletin. The central bank stance on cryptocurrency operations in Nigeria has been described as a phase to understand these currencies so as to create acceptable boundaries that can make them beneficial to the country's financial system. This was part of submissions by guests on NTA Good Morning Nigeria while exploring matters arising from cryptocurrency. Butu Amila reports. On cryptocurrencies is the trend in Nigeria's financial circles today. The volatile, secretive and unregulated nature of these currencies has alarmed the conventional banking world, placing an urgent need to understand the evolving financial order. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria analyzed the reasons why cryptocurrency regulation in Nigeria is the best way to secure the financial system of the nation. It is difficult to allow that to come into a system where you don't have a regulatory, legal, regulatory national framework that could uh, regulate it. So if you look at central bank, the core mandates are financial system stability and price stability. And um, it's important, I think, as the central bank is saying, that they need to regulate this industry and understand what it's all about. Bitcoins and cryptocurrency is the fact that you eliminate exchange rates. What we need to do is engagement, enlightenment. We need to rise up to the position and educate our, our populace. Though other guests on the program applaud the CBN's directive to deposit money banks to desist from transacting in these currencies, they also add they may be the future of transactions globally. Create systems, okay? Create systems such that individuals corporate organizations, uh, banks, uh, financial uh, players can come in, create their own models based on the legal framework that has been done by the regulatory authority, and you would have a very smooth financial system. CBN should come in, take advantage of what we have done. Like I said earlier, I said CBN can pass people that are trading cryptocurrency. They also emphasize the need for all agencies involved in money management in Nigeria to study these currencies so as to harness their full potentials. In Abuja, Butu Miller, NTA News. Effective strategies for achieving sustainable funding of budget circles through the performance of non-oil sector in enhancing revenue growth is shaping perspectives of critical stakeholders under the COVID-19 new normal. Guests on NTA Current Affairs program Tuesday Live commend the continued deployment of technology and other reforms to raise the nation's revenue and meet crucial national expenditures. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports. Multiple sources of internally generated revenue to sustain funding of annual budget, fast-tracked rapid socio-economic development, and improve the well-being of every citizen is reinventing the wheel for the new approach to meet national needs. These financial tools, stakeholders say, have continued to influence and shape opinions of tax managers and experts with relevant acts and reforms of tax to expand sources of revenue drive and collection. The Finance Act is looking at uh, areas that have created loophole for taxpayers and blocking those tax uh, uh, those holes. Um, yeah, there will be less. There will be little 
or not in the, uh, advantage to be taken of the tax law. There's, there's confidentiality of data. There's data protection for the taxpayers. They are comfortable, you know, with the data that they are releasing to the tax authorities. They are comfortable with the technology that we will be adopting and, you know, fitting to make tax administration easier for us as a country. Guests the say the, finance the deliberate paradigm the shift tax from tax dependence on crude oil revenue the benchmark the, the, to the fund the budget the cycles the in the past and entrenching the current economic dispensation with taxes and borrowings as key to budget implementation was apt. The government expects to get, as I said, 7.9 trillion. The government plans to spend 13.5 trillion so the size of the budget is 13.5. So we have a, defi a deficit of about 5.6 trillion. So when you have 5.6 trillion deficit, the question becomes, how do you uh, finance the deficit? What do you do? The revenue we're talking about, that is the budget we're talking about, is precisely that of the federal government, which is in control with the as, uh, concentrated revenue funds of the federal government. So realistically, I would say is tenable. The budget issue is terrible, but we need to do more, particularly from the tax angle. As stakeholders remain consistent in deploying well, effective strategies for achieving 15% ratio to GDP in the nearest future, Nigerian tax body is optimistic of exceeding previous revenue profile for sustainable national progress in Abuja. Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. A workshop to sharpen the awareness of Nigerian journalists on the issues of international criminal justice about the goals of the International Court has been held in Abuja. The program is a continuation of a series of workshops seeking to provide a platform for discussion in the areas of crimes against humanity and the role of the International Criminal Court in investigating, prosecuting and ensuring justice for all. The virtual workshop, which is organized by Wyoma Foundation, also seeks to make journalists play their role as the watchdog of the society, so as to report any human rights violation. Several United Nations coordinated international conventions are hinged on protecting, preserving, and perpetuating nature and biodiversity for continued human survival. A future fusion of food, nature, and biodiversity is an integral part of campaigns for sustainable use of natural resources to mitigate climate change. Onenge Fine Face reports. This action comes with dire consequence on the environment. A balance in food production that is done in harmony with nature and animal welfare is the focus of global advocacy on sustainable food systems. United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, and Chatham House in a study found out that food systems are drivers of biodiversity loss, climate change, and ecological disruptions. Recognizing the fundamental relationship between the health of animals, plants, people, and the environment. The approach is critical for achieving the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. In this age of pandemic, climate, and biodiversity emergency, the United Nations warns that salts could be useless in 60 years if food production continues without consideration for the environment. The solution UNEP suggests involves regenerative farming to grow the right food in the right amount for our people empowered to eat healthy and sustainably. To move toward a global agreement to end factory farming, to reset our food system, to regenerative restorative ways of producing food. Farming nature responsibly will replace chemicals, pesticides and fertilizer with natural nutrients, increase forest covers, replenish oxygen and take carbon out of the atmosphere. Omen Guye, Fine Face, NTA News. Ahead of the UN Food Systems Summit convened by the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres in September 20. 20, the government of Nigeria is set to roll out the National Food Systems Dialogue across the country. Herman Jabani was part of the webinar and now reports. The Food Systems Dialogue is required to improve nutrition security, reduce hunger and prevalence of malnutrition in line with the National Food and Nutrition Policy for Nigeria. 
It will also create more inclusive, healthier food system, encourage a collaborative approach towards building a sustainable food systems and enhance the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. Convener of the Nigerian National Food Systems Dialogue 2021, the Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Olushola Idowu said, the Nigerian dialogue is based on UN five action tracks, which include to ensure access to safe and nutrition food for all, shift to sustainable consumption pattern, boost nation position production, advance equitable livelihood, and building resilience to vulnerability, stock, and stress. The action tracks will draw on the expertise of actors from across the food system, and together they will explore how keep cross-cutting levers of change, such as human rights, finance, innovation, and the empowerment of women and young people can be mobilized. The UN Resident Coordinator, Food and Agriculture Organization, UNICEF, Federal Minister of Agriculture, UNDP, and other development partners are calling for reduction in food wastage and strengthening communication between producers, marketers, and consumers. Sustainable food system do not just help to end hunger. We need to put in place systems to ensure that we produce enough food for the current generation without compromising the ability of future generations to have access to adequate food and proper nutrition. To ensure an inclusive and participatory dialogue, the Nigerian National Food Systems Dialogue will be organized at three levels, which are Inception National Dialogue, Exploratory Dialogue, and the Consolidatory Dialogue. Hamun Jabani, NTA News. The UN Food System Summit will hold in September 2021. You are still watching Nationwide on the Nigerian Television Authority. Now time to link up with Enugu Network Center and Chinenye will be our guide. Thank you, Lydia, and welcome to Enugu. Enugu State Government says it is over appreciative of efforts by individuals and organizations in bringing development and improving the lot of the people of the state. Deputy Governor Cecilia Ezilo stated this while inaugurating buildings and other facilities rehabilitated by a religious charity organization at the State Rehabilitation Center in Emene. Susan Eze has details. The Enugu State Rehabilitation Center, Emene, which has suffered years of neglect, recently got the attention of the Enugu State Government when the State Governor Ifan Ugwani paid a visit to the center. Following the release of funds by the State Executive Council, the center began to enjoy a first lift through the Ministry of Gender Affairs and Social Development. In support of government's efforts at rehabilitating the structures at the center, a religious charity group in partnership with the deputy leader of the Enugu State House of Assembly, Ike Chukwe Zugu, took up the renovation of the administrative block. Actually, I do not know how to thank you, but take our greetings, take our appreciation to your headquarters in Utah. May God bless you. We believe that uh, government cannot do it alone. So whatever we can do to support them, we'll be happy to do that. I wish to call on the philanthropic individuals and organizations to emulate the commendable work of this church. The center also got a donation of six wheelchairs from the Cecilia Ezilo Foundation. The MNA Rehabilitation Home also has a vocational center set up to equip the indigent inmates with entrepreneurial skills. In Enugu, Susan Eze. NTA News. Ahead of the November 2021 gubernatorial election in Anabra State, the People's Democratic Party PDP Southeast Zone is strategizing to ensure victory at the polls. Addressing journalists at the end of a zonal meeting in Enugu, Acting Zonal Chairman Southeast Ali Odefa said the party is leaving no stone unturned on the path to victory in Anabra State. Again, Susan Eze has details. Emerging from the closed-door meeting, the acting zonal chairman made it clear that discussions at the meeting centered on strategies to ensure that Anambra State joins the list of PDP states in the southeast zone. We're talking to people, we're consulting, we're reaching out to everybody in all the states, in all the corners, we're talking to everybody. 
This is with a view to make sure that we achieve success. He also announced that the meeting adopted Governor Ifa Nyugwani as the leader of the party in the zone. Meanwhile, Governor Yeso Wike of River State, who paid a condolence visit to the state on the death of a serving commissioner, made a brief appearance at the meeting where he noted that it was high time the party put its resources together to ensure victory at the Anambra polls. Anambra is to be a PDP state, but because of the banglings and not giving in, that's what has made PDP to lose Anambra. We have only two states now in the south, uh, yes, which is Enugu and uh, If we add Anambra, it's a good post for us. The Anambra governorship election is scheduled to hold in November 2021. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. And that is it from Enugu. Nationwide continues with Sadia in Sokoto after this commercial break. Do stay. The broadcast media ecosystem is dynamic and requires continuous training for practitioners to perform optimally. NTA TV College Jaws invites relevant officers to the following specially packaged training programs. Intermediate online news reporting skills, date 1st March to 12th March 2021, two weeks. Studio lighting indoor and outdoor, date 1st March to 5th March 2021, one week. Modern trends in broadcast media marketing, date 15th March to 9th April 2021, four weeks. Understanding public service rules and mastering the art of standard minute writing, reports, memoranda, and briefs. Date 15 February to 12 March 2021. Four weeks. The course fee for the four week courses is 100,000 naira per participant. The fee for the two week course is 80,000 naira, while the course fee for the one week course is 40,000 naira only. Accommodation inclusive. Venue for all the courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA TV College near Old Government House, Refield, Joss. For more inquiries, please call 0803-314-4383 or 0806-980-9807. NTA TV College, JAWS, training you to be the best you want to be. Although social media as a channel of communication is inherently harmless, it becomes harmful and damaging when used without discretion and thoughtfulness. Bad social media users spread rumors and fake news without verification. But good social media users stop, reflect, and verify information before sharing it. Be a good social media user. Stop the spread of fake news. Verify the authenticity of your source and use social media responsibly for a better Nigeria. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, in collaboration with the National Orientation Agency. A new edition of TV Guide is out with special focus on the game changer, His Excellency Governor Abdullah Hisuli of Nasarawa State. Broadcasting in a digital economy, Maxwell Yoko gives an insight. This edition also features Nancy Naji of AIT, a name synonymous with business. Meet the NCDC boss, Dr. Chipri Ihekwazu. TV Guide, your indispensable companion, also x-rays the relevance of social media in the modern society. Meet some TV professionals who have impacted their spaces and other inspiring stories in sports, entertainment, and lots more. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or NTA station stationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. Burnley is taking maximum points in their last two matches against Crystal Palace. Will they make it a hat-trick of victories when both teams square off at Selhurst Park this Saturday? Find out in Crystal Palace versus Burnley on the Premier League Live, showing on the NTA Network from 3.30 p.m. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Axis Bank, Papai Jebu, Lipton, and Close Up, in association with Goal.com. For staying with us, federal government says it is committed to bringing an end to HIV and AIDS in the country by the year 2030. This came to the fore at a five-day capacity strengthening 
of key vulnerable population in access to HIV and AIDS services efficiency in Sokoto. Elat Abdullahi reports. The training brought together 25 participants across the 23 local governments in the state. Director General, National Agency for the Control of AIDS, Dr. Gambo Gomel Aliyu said the idea is to equip the participants with basics about stigmatization and discrimination and how to identify careers at the grassroots and link them with health centers for treatment. There is just no way um, we can end AIDS and prevent HIV spread among our people as well as death from HIV without controlling and containing HIV within people that have HIV. Sokoto State has centers spread across the state, including antenatal centers for fighting the disease. There is need for people living with HIV AIDS to participate, to or to a role into the state contributory health scheme. That will afford them additional opportunity for them to access uh, drugs and medicine uh, that is outside the, the HIV and AIDS drugs. Some of the participants speak on the training. So I'm sure that uh, we will deliver and uh, impact to our various communities for groups within the state. It will also help when it comes to uh, managing um, HIV as a whole. Meanwhile, the Director General of the National Agency for Control of AIDS visited the Sokoto State Governor, Minwazira Tambol, during which he solicited support to facilitate the activities of the agency. In Sokoto, Lalat Abdullahi, NTA News. Now, a notorious bandit terrorizing people of Sokoto, Zangfara, and Kasina State has repented and embraced peace. Dawa, who took oath with the glorious Quran alongside some five members of his gang, also surrendered sophisticated weapons at government house Gusau. Sadia Vakartino has more. The notorious bandit, popularly known as Awalu Daudawa, was said to be a gang leader of the armed bandits operating from Gidanjaja, Dumburum Forest, along Zanfrakas in a boundary. He, alongside some other five members of his gang, renounced banditry and surrendered their weapons to Governor Bella Muhammad at Zanfra State Government House, Kusau. The repentant bandits, who individually took oath with the glorious Quran before heads of security agencies, traditional and religious leaders, vowed never to go back to banditry and other related crimes. They also sought for forgiveness from the general public. Governor Bella Muhammad said the development is in furtherance of the peace process initiated by his administration, expressing optimism that more of the bandits would lay down their arms soonest. The first state commissioner for security and home affairs, Abu Bakr Muhammad Dauran, affirmed that reconciliation remains the best option for the ongoing struggle to achieve a lasting peace in the state. The weapons surrendered by the ex-bandits include 20 AK-47 rifles, one general purpose machine gun, a rocket launcher, 22 magazines, and rounds of live ammunition. In Gusau, Sadia Abu Bakar Tuno, NTA News. And that's it from here. It's back to Lydia in Abuja. Many thanks, Sadia. The Nigerian Union of Journalists, NUJ, is soliciting partnership with individuals and corporate organizations to host the 2020-2021 Press Freedom Awards in commemoration of World Press Freedom Day, coming forth on the 4th of May 2021. Abdul Malik Hassan reports. The Nigerian constitution not only guarantees freedom of expression, but also gives the media a role of being a watchdog. Despite these, Media professionals are said to be suffering from harassment, threats, injuries, deaths, and imprisonment while discharging their duties. A development that prompted the Nigerian Union of Journalists to institute awards to honor media professionals with outstanding performance in the course of these challenges. The 2021 World Press Freedom Day is fast approaching and NUJ is perfecting plans to reward outstanding performers and pay tributes to those who lost their lives in line of duty. One touch bearers of Press Freedom Awards will be given to journalists who have faced harassment, physical injury, imprisonment, or death in their line of duty. Press Freedom Platform Awards will be given to media houses that have supported press freedom. Corporate partners of the Media Awards will be given to diplomatic missions and multilateral agencies 
that have supported press freedom. The 2020 Press Freedom Awards, which was postponed due to COVID-19 pandemic, will hold concurrently with the 2021 edition. In Abuja, Abdumali Hassan, NTA News. That report now concludes nationwide. We thank you for being a part of it. I am Lydia ODJ Oche. Remember to be a star and join NTA in the stand against rape and rapists. Have a wonderful evening. Goodbye.